Om. Sahana Vavatu Sahana Bhunaktu Sahaviryam Karavavahai Tejasvidavadi Tamastu Mavidvishavahai Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Sairam everyone. So we have covered, uh, I think about 45 so far, uh, of the names. So I will just go through them quickly if it's okay. I think repetition is always good. Om Bhagavan Shri Satyasai Babaya Namaha Om Shri Sai Satyaswarupaya Namaha Om Shri Sai Satya Dharma Parayanaya Namaha Om Shri Sai Varadaya Namaha Om Shri Sai Sat Purushaya Namaha Om Shri Sai Satya Gunatmane Namaha Om Shri Sai Sadhu Vardhanaya Namaha Om Shri Sai Sadhu Jana Poshanaya Namaha Om Shri Sai Sarvagnaya Namaha Yes, Sister Pushpa. I don't get the screen sharing. I don't know, it's only me. Okay, maybe I'll just check. No, I don't either. Yeah. Oh, sorry, one second. Okay. You, you can see it now? No, no. not yet. Okay, oh. now? Yes. yes. Okay, sorry. Thank you. Thank you, Saira. Om Shri Sai Sarva Jana Priyaya Namaha. Om Shri Sai Sarva Shakti Murtaye Namaha. Om Shri Sai Sarve Shaya Namaha Om Shri Sai Sarva Sangha Parityagine Namaha Om Shri Sai Sarvantaryamine Namaha Om Shri Sai Mahimat Mane Namaha Om Shri Sai Maheshwara Swarupaya Namaha Om Shri Sai Parti Gramod Bhavaya Namaha Om Shri Sai Parti Kshet Nivasine Namaha Om Shri Sai Yashak Kaya Shirdi Vasine Namaha Om Shri Sai Jodi 
ஆதிபல்லி சோமப்பாய நமக ஓம் ஸ்ரீ சாயி பரத்வாஜ ரிஷி கோத்ராய நமக ஓம் ஸ்ரீ சாயி பக்த வத்சலாய நமக ஓம் ஸ்ரீ சாயி அப்பாந்தராத்மனே நமக ஓம் ஸ்ரீ சாயி அவதாரமூர்த்தையே நமக ஓம் ஸ்ரீ சாயி சர்வ பய நிவாரிணே நமக ஓம் ஸ்ரீ சாயி ஆபஸ்தம்ப சூத்ராய நமக ஓம் ஸ்ரீ சாயி அபய பிரதாய நமக ஓம் ஸ்ரீ சாயி ரத்னாகர வம்சோத்பவாய நமக ஓம் ஸ்ரீ சாயி ஷிர்டி சாயி அபேத சத்தியவதாராய நமக ஓம் ஸ்ரீ சாயி ஷங்கராய நமக ஓம் ஸ்ரீ சாயி ஷிர்டி சாயி மூர்த்தையே நமக ஓம் ஸ்ரீ சாயி துவாரகாமாயி பாசினே நமக ஓம் ஸ்ரீ சாயி சித்ராவதி தட புட்ட பர்த்தி பிகாரிணே நமக ஓம் ஸ்ரீ சாயி சக்தி பிரதாய நமக ஓம் ஸ்ரீ சாயி சரணாகத திராணாய நமக ஓம் ஸ்ரீ சாயி ஆனந்தாய நமக ஓம் ஸ்ரீ சாயி ஆனந்தாய நமக ஓம் ஸ்ரீ சாயி ஆர்த்திராண பராயணாய நமக ஓம் ஸ்ரீ சாயி அநாத நாதாய நமக ஓம் ஸ்ரீ சாயி அசகாய சகாயாய நமக ஓம் ஸ்ரீ சாயி லோக பாந்தவாய நமக ஓம் ஸ்ரீ சாயி லோக ரக்ஷா பராயணாய நமக ஓம் ஸ்ரீ சாயி லோக நாதாய நமக ஓம் ஸ்ரீ சாயி தீனஜன போஷணாய நமக ஓம் ஸ்ரீ சாயி மூர்த்தி திரய ஸ்வரூபாய நமக ஸோ தீஸ் ஆர் ஆல் த நேம்ஸ் விச் வி ஹவ் சீன் ஸோ ஃபார் வி கேன் move on if it's okay with all of you unless someone has any questions on any of this if not we will move so we're going to look at the 46th one today I think there were a couple of questions last week but I think I will address them at the end of the class. I think 
Kalyani had asked about Nanda and I think Brother Kumar asked about the five actions of five Murtis. I will cover them at the end if it's okay. We will continue with this next 12 names today, okay? First, Om Shri Sai Mukti Pradaya Namaha. Uh, there's only one compound letter or two compound letters. One is Ukti, Uk, it, and E, Ukti. The next one is pra, pra, I think which all of you are very familiar now because you have seen it quite a few times. So Mukti Pradaya Namaha. I think it's pretty simple because there's no aspirated uh, consonants here, so it should not be too difficult. Mukti stands for liberation, I think which all of you know, so there's nothing much for me to explain. Pradaha means I think we have already looked at one who grants in many ways. So there are many muktis, you know, he grants all kinds of muktis. Uh, so the prostration to the giver of liberation. That's what I have put. So it should be pretty simple. Um, I don't expect to have any questions. So we'll look at the next one. Om Shri Sai Kalusha Viduraya Namaha. Um, this is the cerebral sha. The tongue should be pointing up to the roof of the mouth. Kalusha Viduraya Namaha. The simple, the first vibhakti order. Without any, this is the fourth vibhakti means to Kalusha Vidura. The bow, I bow down to Kalusha Vidura. That's the fourth variation of Vibhakti. Um, the simple noun is Kalusha, Kalusha Viduraha. Kalusha Viduraha. So Kalusha means impurity of any kind, dirt, impurity. It can also mean mental impurities, bad qualities, wicked qualities in us, all of that. Viduraha. Dura means long, far away. Vidura means one who takes it away, far away, beyond far away. Okay. So one who takes all the bad things away from us. So that is, that person is Kalusha Viduraha. So the meaning is prostration to the one who takes impurity far away. That's the meaning I put down. Uh, second. Bear with me for a second. My screen is giving me a problem. Okay. So if there are no other questions, I will go on to the next one. Om Shri Sai Karu Na Karaya Namaha. Karuna Karaya Namaha. So again, this is the fourth one. Two Karuna Kara. So simple noun is Karuna Karaha. So this Karuna Kara can be split in two ways. Okay, so I will look at both and give you the meaning. That's, you know, the, when two words are put together, which I think I've explained to you, which is called Samasa, um, we, we have, when you split it, uh, there are many ways you can split the words, depending on your own understanding or perception. So one of the ways we can split is 
கருணா ஆகரக this na un plus a plus a remains na again okay karuna kara so karuna plus a kara or you can split it as karuna plus kara both the splits are acceptable in sanskrit so we can look at the meanings of each of them karuna means compassion mercy akaraha means the source the origin of the origin place of origin is akaraha from where everything comes you can say okay karaha means one who does a person who makes things happen is kara kara karaha karaha comes from the word kru the verb kru kru means to do from that that word comes karaha so you can say karuna akaraha means he is the source of compassion itself if you if you think that swami resides in our heart if you tap into that then there will be compassion in our own heart swami that's why swami says hridaya daya also is compassion karuna so when the heart is filled with compassion that means god resides there okay so karuna akarha means source or the place of origin of compassion itself from where it originates or you can say karuna karha who always does he gives mercy you know he does compassion uh, that means he uh, is compassionate towards all his all the people in the world so both ways you can look at the uh, name i have just given prostration to the source of compassion if you look at the next uh, name om shri sai sarvadharaya namaha sarvadharay namaha that is the fourth vibhakti simple name is sarvadharah sarvadharah I, i hope all of you remember that uh, just for this hook at the top is ir okay just to remind you so it can be split because there's a sandhi just the way the previous name had sandhi karuna plus akara two words coming together so when we split they become karuna and akara so here it is sarva plus aadharah sarva means all everyone anything all things you can say all better translation i think aadharah means support dhara is to self to say sub, supporting something to support action aadhara i mean foundation okay something which supports everything uh, so one who supports i think i should say you can say support or supporter one who supports um so i have given the translation as prostration to the one who is the support for all okay because he protects us he keeps us alive everything in, in every way he supports physically mentally and spiritually okay so you can say one who supports at all levels for us also at the physical level mental level spiritual level he is the full support so sarva aadharaya namaha sarva aadharaya namaha so we can look at the next uh, name om shri sai sarva hridaya vasine namaha jon sakan
so this is the fourth vibhakti sarva hridaya vasi name the simple name is sarva hridaya vasi i think we have already looked at nivasi and vasi as nouns um, it can also be said sarva hridaya vasin uh, but i just used first vibhakti or the plain noun where we, you can use it as subject so this sarva hridaya vasi has three words embedded so it's a samasa samasa with three words sarva hridaya vasi so i think you all know the this is hr plus r which is the um, vowel where the tongue is pointed upwards r hr so this is the way it's written just to highlight to you all there's a curve at the uh, uh, c at the you know in the middle if you want to put it that way an extra c in the middle here sarva hridaya vasi sarva means all hridaya means heart vasi means one who resides resident prostration to the one i think i should say who who resides in everyone's heart yeah. so you can see in the previous one also we uh, karuna kara you know we were talking about karuna means daya compassion hridaya so that hridaya is shown up here so where there is compassion that that organ inner organ is called hridaya then in that he always recites sarva hridaya vasi prostration to the one who recites in everyone's heart om shri sai sarva punya phala pradaya namaha so the only one which i only letter which i would like to highlight is this letter called p p is the second letter in the pa varga pa p uh, so that has to be aspirated uh, sometimes north indians pronounce it as f f sound also is used in the in north india because in hindi they would use f uh, but the accurate sanskrit pronunciation is p aspirated p okay phala so i think that's something which not very common for many tamil speaking people and for hindi speaking people they would use f so i think the benefit of both we should pronounce as if it is sanskrit it should be pronounced phala okay p there should be felt sarva punya phala pradaya namaha so the simple name is sarva punya phala pradaha sarva punya phala pradaha so there are four words as you can see sarva is one punya is second phala pradaha sarva means all punya is meritorious deeds um many tamilians tamils would like to uh, will pronounce as punniyam they put a ni that is tamil but in sanskrit it's punya okay there's no ni between un and ya so it's sarva punya phala which is param in tamil but in sanskrit it's phala so punya means all meritorious deeds all good deeds phala is fruit pradaha means one who gives prostration to the giver of the fruits of all meritorious deeds 
that means every merit no no merit meritorious deed which we do will be wasted she will give a fruit for that of course he would do the bad ones also uh, any bad deeds but we ask him to give all merits don't you know give us you are the one who gives us and we thank him for that so next one om shri sai sarva papa shaya paraya namaha sarva papa shaya karaya namaha um, this the uh, sha only i would say uh, which is aksha uh, the sha is the sha which is cerebral sha sha which is the tongue pointing up okay so it's a compound consonant sh we i think we have looked at it before but just revising it okay sarva papa kshaya karaya namaha so this is the way it's ksh okay transliteration so again here also there are four words sarva papa kshaya karaha sarva means we talked about punya before now we're talking about papa sarva papa is sin kshaya means removal or reduction i think all of you must be familiar with the word akshaya akshaya means that will never reduce it will never become empty akshaya patram uh, means the vessel which will never become empty that means no kshaya akshaya uh, in the big in the uh, as prefix will negate uh, the kshaya okay that's why akshaya is a very common word which we all know so here it's kshaya that means it will become empty it will reduce it will be completely removed sarva papa kshaya removal or reduction karaha means one who does it okay so sarva papa kshaya kara prostration to the remover of all sins so we are basically you know we ask swami to give us say a different treatment for different deeds of ours punya give us the fruit papam you just take it away okay so that's uh, prayer so we and with devotion if we pray he will remove sins from ever coming from us also so that's the meaning prostration to the remover of all sins so the next name is om shri sai sarva roga nivarine namaha sarva roga nivarine namaha the simple noun or name simple name is sarva roga nivari so you can say sarva roga nivarin um, so it has three words sarva roga nivari sarva means all roga means disease nivari means who prevents preventer of all diseases so best immunization okay lord is the best immunization yes brother melison you have a question i just want to make sure is nivari means is it remover or preventer what's the exact it's preventer that okay. is the okay he does he does not it reach you even that's what meaning uh, but it also can be and to be who removes it nivarana okay so the thing is some of the problems you don't want the problem to come to you um so even if it comes 
Uh, we will, I will discuss. I will discuss server over any why uh, who removes. Yes, he removes and he also prevents it from coming. Okay. okay. So both. So we want him to prevent rather than uh, after it comes to remove it. Yeah, but, so but, but, the, but the word "nivarane" has the meaning of prevent, prevent rather sir. than. Oh, okay. Yes. So you know, I will. Um, you know, okay. You're asking, so I will just. Uh, now that you're asking, I will. Uh, yeah, because usually. I know that's uh, a, maybe that's a in the Tamil use. Tamil yeah, use. Exactly. We are used to that. Divarane means. Uh, uh, yes. and remove uh, whatever so i just want to make clear no no no, no wait wait it's it's good that you ask um, i'm just going to i online dictionaries i check quickly it shouldn't take me a minute it's always better to be sure okay I think you can see, brother. Uh, you can. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I can see. Yeah. So it can be holding back or warding off. Okay, that's the meaning for Nivarin. I'm going to one second. So Nivarin. Oh, okay. So Nivarana, you know, that's also another word which is a related word which gets used. See, you can see. Yeah. Yeah, so it has Prevents. both the meaning. Nivarana means preventing. Preventing. Okay. okay. So, warding off, is, uh, warding off means uh, is uh, almost remove, right? Remove. But yes. so it has both the meanings. Both the meanings, okay. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, so, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, one second. You can see the screen now, no? So. Okay, so I have used the word Sarva Roga um, As preventer of all diseases, you can say remover of all diseases also. Maybe I will just put that. Because it, it means both. Okay. Um, so I... So, so I think this. I think it's good to discuss this name a bit because you know people will say you know if so what we get diseases we pray to Swami and we get diseases. So what to do with that? You know how how is he is neither removing nor is he stopping it from coming. So these are questions which I think people can ask and we are praying to Swami. You know God in general. You know we pray that he removes. Um, the reality is there are many diseases and he will only re remove the worst kind. So the Bhava Roga means the existence itself is a disease. Existence, to be born itself is a disease. The Adi Vyadi or the Adi Roga is the ego sense that Ahankaram itself is a disease. That's the way um, disease is described. So for different people, he will remove different kinds of birds ultimately he wants to remove the disease of thinking that we are the body uh, you know so that we can spiritually progress so it it means all this it can the the diseases can be mental physical and depending on what the person needs the lord will take care so that's the belief um, and that's the basis of this uh, it is not physical diseases alone um, it is also our spiritual diseases also he takes care. So that's the meaning. And ultimately he is the remover of all egos. And that's Vaidya. Vaidya Narayana Hari is another name for the Lord. So I thought I would just. Okay, next one. 
54 ओम श्री साई सर्व बाध हराय नमः सर्व बाध हराय नमः ओके आई जस्ट आल्सो वांट टू another point which i wanted to make i will just go back and okay okay i will come back to it later om shri sai because i okay i can explain to you here and then we will go back uh, the, the the i think you are just pay attention to b this is an unaspirated b this is the third letter in the pa varga b it is not b okay it's b the next one is dh that is the fourth letter in the ta varga so it has to be aspirated dh ba dh haraya namaha okay when i came to this ha you know i everything bells went off because in especially um, i would say among tamils we don't differentiate between k and h kara means to do okay hara means destroy or remove also okay take it away uh, so we need to be very clear which letter we are pronouncing if we say sarva badha karaya namaha the meaning is completely different okay so we will come to that but i thought i will just highlight before i forget The simple name is sarva badha hara sarva badha hara so there are three words sarva badha and hara sarva means all badha means trouble and hurt hara means destroyer one who destroys so it destroys all the troubles or any hurt any suffering uh, any to anything anything which torments us also called badha something which is tormenting or troubling you so he removes or destroys it all hara is another name for shiva himself who is uh, responsible for the department of destruction or dissolution okay hara also means taking away stealing so two meanings are there uh, so i thought i would just mention but in this case i would say we will say destroy sarva badha hara but if we say sarva badha kara that means he is the one who keeps on troubling us so that's why i said we should make sure that we pronounce it properly with understanding that's what it is ultimately so i wanted to go back to the word karuna kara if you say karuna hara that means destroy the compassion okay so it should be karuna kara there this is badha hara so i think just paying attention would be good because um, especially is a problem for tamils i would say uh, so i thought i will just highlight that Om Shri Sai Ananta Nuta Kartrene Namah Ananta A Na Inta Nuta Kartrene Namah Ananta Nuta Kartrene Namah I think it is not necessarily pronounced correctly by many people so Uh, this is this special this word r tr r tr it's a compound consonant is this this letter by itself is tr it plus r the alphabet um, the vowel which is pointed upward towards the roof of the mouth in you know, r like kr krishna we also look at r there this is tr kartr 
ne namaha the simple word is ananta nuta kartru so let's look at the first this the uh, three words ananta nuta and kartru ananta means endless anta if you say a inta is end end of something is anta an plus anta means endless without end okay ananta nuta is nuti means to praise i think in suprabhatam we say nuti bih uh, there is a word nuti bih we would have looked at so nuti means to praise anything praise worthy is also nuti so nuta means what somebody is after when you praise somebody is called nuta okay so somebody who has been praised that person is called nuta okay ananta nuta so you are a praised one without end okay kartri doer so this it can have multiple ways of understanding this meaning but you know one of the meaning is the lord is always engaged in activities which are continuously praised by people forever once whatever he has done he will be praised forever because if he has done something good no one will forget they will always remember and they will keep on praising that so people praising all his actions forever so that kind of a person is ananta nuta kartru so you can also say he will make us also do praiseworthy actions okay kartru means he is the doer but he can make us also do endless activities which are praiseworthy so both ways uh, this name can be understood or meditated on or contemplated so ananta nuta kartru so prostration to the doer of endless deeds which are praised that is one meaning you can say prostration to the doer of deeds which are praised endlessly okay so there are many ways you can um see you give i have just given one meaning uh, because this is like poetry you know the words can be interpreted understood meditated on in various ways it's it is uh, however we want to i am just giving some samples of meanings uh, but every devotee can you know imagine and visualize and pray however it appeals okay so we'll go to the next om shri sai adi puru shaya namaha okay adi purushaya namaha so the there are two words adi purushaha i think i made a mistake okay so there are two words adi and purusha adi means initial original ancient it, it has multiple meanings it's it's a beginning also you can say i think in uh, tamil they will say adiyu mandamum illa you understand there's no beginning no end anta is end adi means beginning i think everyone knows tirukural ahara mudala lam adi bhagavan ne putre adi bhagavan means the, the first one first one or the original one or the beginning the one who was it at the beginning adi purushah i put the word persona um it should not be considered the per, the man who was the first man you know uh, when the purusha tattva means it is not gender based um i think if we study dharma vain swami it's purusha means that god divinity itself is purusha okay so adi purusha prostration to the original purusha that's all i have said 
uh, so you can view it uh, however you want to you know the one who created the entire world is the Adi Purusha next uh, 57th one Om Shri Sai Adi Shaktaye Namaha so we looked at Adi Purusha now it's Adi Shakti Yenama. So simple ne, noun is Adi Shakti. Okay. So there are two words Adi and Shakti. Adi is again initial, ancient, original, the first, whatever. Shakti means energy and the power. Because originally the Lord was one and then it became two. Purusha and Prakriti was Shiva and Shakti. One was unmoving, the other one was moving. And that's the way this creation came to be. The proton and the electron within the atoms. And so, frustration is that original energy. You know, that's where I put original power, I don't know, however you want to put it, original Shakti. Maybe that would have been a better way to translate. If there's no real good way of translating. Shakti means that embodiment of energy or all powers. Okay, so we pray to that, bow down to that. So these are all the names. Uh, I had 12 names which I had chosen to do today. Um, I don't know whether there, if there are any questions. Otherwise, I will go on to a couple of points which we discussed last week, so I thought I will just cover. Yes, there are no questions. So I will first go to because we were talking about Shiva and Shakti. Um, so I will first touch that. You know, there was a question which Brother Kumar had asked. I had um, mentioned, but maybe I didn't dwell on it too much because I thought I will prepare the names and come. I had mentioned he had asked. Uh, Murti Murti Swarupaya. Okay, there were three Murtis, and I told Shristi, you know, the one who creates, maintains, and destroys Shiv, Brahma, Vishnu, Maheshwara, um, or Brahma, Vishnu, Rudra. So, three Murti, uh, that was something which we discussed. So, brother had asked, uh, what about you know, we in Tirubandaram, we have five functions. Is there any mention uh, here? Uh, so I said there are uh, uh, Shiva's five faces are talked about. So I thought I will, um, it was not complete uh, good answer. So I wanted to introduce the Sanskrit words. It's an opportunity to look at the Sanskrit words also. So I thought I will do that. So I will, um, so I'm given here some, you know, so there are, so you can ask where is it mentioned? Okay, first let me just say the five pancha murtyaha means five murtis. Okay, it's a concept in the Shaiva tradition mainly. Okay, they put five together. And um, so it is there are mentions in something called Pancha Brahma Upanishad. Pancha Brahma Upanishad is one of the Shiva Upanishads, supposed to be part of Yajur Veda. And that mentions these five as one place. Shiva Purana also mentions, just to mention a couple of them, where all the five are mentioned together. Okay. Um, so these, some of the Upanishads attached to Vedas are called Vaishnava Upanishads. Some are called Shaiva Upanishads and so on. So this Pancha Brahma Upanishad mentions this. So Pancha Murti means what are the five Murtis? They are Brahma, Vishnu, Rudra, Maheshwara, and Sadashiva. These are names which we come across in bhajans and all that. So I thought, why not uh, discuss it? So Brahma, then there are five Kritya, Pancha Kritya, five activities. And there's some little Panchanana, five faces. Shiva is supposed to be actually having five faces. 
Brahma is responsible for Srishti. That is creation. I have not given the transliteration or translation. I hope um, uh, it's all good enough. Okay, Vishnu is responsible for Stiti. Means the state. Stiti means a state. When something is being, it's in existence. That's called Stiti. Okay. Rudra is Samhara. Samhara means complete destruction, dissolution. He is responsible for that. Maheshwara is responsible for something called Tirobhava. Tirobhava. That means hiding. That which is not seen. Maheshwara is considered the first one who came into being. The Purusha who was with Shakti. So he hid himself so that we can't see in the creation. Okay, Tirobhava means he hides behind everything. Sadashiva provides what's called Anugraha means he will bless. So these are the, this Anugraha in Tamil is called Arulal. Tirobhava in Tamil is called Maraita. Okay. So these are the five activities of the divine. Then it is, they say that Shiva, you know, the Pancha Brahma or Shiva has supposed to have five faces. The first one is Sadhyo Jata. Second one is Vamadeva. Third one is Aghora. Tatpurusha. And Ishana. So these are five faces of Shiva pointing to four different directions and to the sky. So this is, uh, is this all uh, Shaiva Agama traditions. So this, these, some of the, there are other mentions, you know, in, just the way in the south there is Shaiva Siddhanta. If you go to Kashmir, there is Kashmir Shaivism. There are many Sanskrit texts. You can list a large number of texts which have these concepts built in. Uh, so in Sanskrit also, these concepts are there in, in many different places. But now I will come back to why I wanted to bring this was we talked about Purusha and Shakti, Shiva and Shakti. So that is, Shiva is the one who blesses and who is not visible, but he is blessing. It's the same Lord how we are. Maheshwara stands for some Shakti part because Shakti is the creation itself is Shakti. This creation, the Lord is remaining, but you can't see him. He's hidden. So in uh, Advaita Vedanta, so the belief is there was unmanifest Brahman. Then he becomes Maheshwara. Okay. In that Maheshwara state, there's Purusha as well as Prakriti. Okay. Purusha and Prakriti. There's God within and the Shakti without. What you see everywhere is Shakti, what is within. So in that, there are only two entities. Dvaita, that's the concept. Then these two take on three aspects based on the qualities, Sattva, Rajas, Tamas. Now these, some of these we discuss in I don't know, Sandeha Nivarani, if you all remember. So that two then takes on three qualities and becomes three. So in the Advaita, how it is classified is different from Advaita or Siddhanta. So Siddhanta clubs all these five as five activities. Even in, I think Brother Kumar was talking about Tirumandram. Even if Tirumandram, there are verses, verses which discuss the three, there are verses which discuss the five activities of Shiva. Uh, so I, because he asked whether there was any uh, in a, any usage in Sanskrit texts and Vedic texts. So I thought I would just um, highlight them. Because this is an eternal debate. Uh, you know, there are things which are found here, it's not there, they are found there, found here. See, one of the reasons why Sanskrit is an important language is most of these people, including Tirumular or uh, the Nayanmars or anyone, 
they were well versed in multiple languages even in modern days times uh, even subramanya bharati are is considered the greatest tamil poet was a very uh, well read person in sanskrit and he has translated many sanskrit texts into tamil also so they have made it available so i just thought i would just highlight that and also introduce some topics i hope everyone is fine with not spending too much time but just giving you some exposure to some of these names so i thought i will do that um then i will go to i think kalyani had asked i, I guess she is there um about nanda she had asked so i said i will spend some time and come back so she is there so we will take a quick look at that i have not uh, prepared in detail so i have um, take the word nanda anandaya namaha i think that's the way we started nanda itself i said is joy ananda is who gives joy again and again all the time so nanda is made of two words one is nam and the nam is the root word root word or root verb for nama to bow down okay and the is one who is the giver i think we have already looked at quite a bit nanda okay so nam means to bow down swami gives the meaning of nam as nama as na means no ma stands for mamakara or mindness okay nama means not mine i am not the one you know it doesn't belong to me it's all yours that is bowing down to the lord so nama means i don't have any ahankara or mamakara and you bow down to the lord so one you can see is when there is no mamakara nama when that state what comes what that state gives us is joy whenever we are, we will be happy when we don't have the concept of ahankara or mamakara we have true joy bliss when we renounce everything in this world we get joy that joy is called nanda it's not dependent on anything external it's dependent only on the lord so so that's the word nanda so ananda means one who again and again gives us that experience that is bliss that bliss comes only when we think we are not the body nothing belongs to us we don't have possessiveness in us when we lose all possessiveness we will be always happy and joyful and that's the meaning of nanda um so i thought i will just uh, mention that because i had an opportunity thanks to her question uh, to spend some time thinking and talk, contemplating and doing some research on this um, i don't want to go into too many details because there are in sanskrit actually there are um, uh, rules how you know which pratyaya got affix got as uh, attached and things like that but i think this is good enough for us uh, for our purposes but you know there can be many ways of interpreting it so i will stop here and uh, that's all i have i have prepared for today um if there are any questions i if i can answer if i have an answer i will share otherwise i will do some research um the floor is yours now it's 10:03 yes brother sir so sir am brother i need to uh, get some more explanations regarding the purusa and the and the sati now what the purusa is one the whole, the whole prakriti we say dominant we studied so uh, for the for the creation so we need the sakti so if we take the atma also atma we uh, we studied it doesn't front so because of the sakti is there that's how one giving us to do the energy to creation and can could you please uh, i have little bit of doubt could you please explain that one for me please thank you okay brothers okay and brother vimalisan you have a question brother 
Yeah, um, but I think uh, you you answered to Das question, and then if there is time, I will ask that because because that's uh, something. No, no. Actually, this if there is time, I thought. Uh, I want to ask you something that might benefit others also. That's why, uh, but if you want, I can tell now, but it, it will take no, time, you, that's why. Okay, you can tell, then I will. Uh, okay, okay, this is, this regarding is how to, uh, since we did that, uh, the, about the Riyambaga Mandram, uh, yes. Mandram, Mandram, uh, I came across, at, uh, at, uh, incidentally, I came across uh, Sundaraya explaining um, just uh, the Driyamaga Mandram, uh, the chanting and the meaning and all that. Uh, it was very nice, but in that, uh, I, I, I'm not too sure, but I, I, the, the you, when you explain, you, that, that, that's what I have been uh, read and listened all, uh, mostly. Uh, uh, in that, the word Pushti Vardhanam, they usually say that the, the, the meaning is, uh, Three, uh, we worship the three-eyed uh, yes. who, who has divine fragrance, uh, you know, that attribute to the Shiva, and and then we pray that uh, uh, to to liberate us from uh, uh, mortality and give us immortality. That's what, but in uh, in that uh, clip, uh, he explained that pushed. Dreyambagam Yajamahe is okay. Is uh, uh, three. Uh, we pray the three-eyed one. Yes. Pushtivad Dreyambagam Yajamahe. Dreyambagam Yajamahe. Pushtivad the nam. Sugandim Pushtivad. Sugandim Pushtivad. Sugan. Sugan. Sorry. Sugandim Pushtivad the nam. Sugandim. Sugandim. Uh, he, he he is not connecting to Lord Shiva. Sugand Ganda means uh, 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 smell. Uh, so that 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 is the attribute of earth element uh, of the five. Uh, so so always is uh, divine divine tribe. So that that denotes the body. So we pray the three eyed Shiva, who who nourish our body, to liberate us from mortality and give immortality. And, and in the same structure, also that, that I never came across that meme, but that, that, that kind of explanation was uh, convincing and, and uh, it sort of, I, I thought that it is more meaningful. And uh, so I would like to know your opinion. That's why I'm- Okay, sure. Asking. Will. So I will, I'll go back to, I will get that slide and we'll go over that. Yeah, yeah, yeah no better that, yeah. So I will first address the Dasan's question, Purusha and Prakriti, sure. what is the role of Purusha and what's the role of Prakriti? Um, the thing is the brother, Purusha and Prakriti don't stand apart. As Swami would say, one is positive, one is negative. The positive and the negative, when they come together only, everything in this world works. It is, it's, a, it's trying to understand the, the way the, the created world functions is the only difference between Purusha and Prakriti. Okay. The Purusha is, that's why I use the word, Purusha is like the proton. In an atom, there's a proton which does not move. It is in the center. But just because it does not move, it doesn't mean it's not active. It is active in a different dimension. Whereas the electron keeps on moving around the proton. But the atom consists of both the proton and the electron. You cannot have electron separately and proton separated because both are needed for it to be called an atom. So in this world, Purusha is that, that one who does not move. In the sense, even if you take Shiva, you know, you have Shiva dancing, you know, they will say Shiva Tandom and then Shakti dances and things like that. Uh, so if the Shiva doesn't move, then how does he dance? Is the another question. Okay. What we perceive as dance or movement is different than Shiva's movement. Even though he is not active, he is active. But visibly, from a physical sense, we will not be able to see his activity. Whereas Shakti, 
is visible as activity. That's what we see this creation nature. If you see the, you know, it's uh, uh, just talking about this Thirobhava. Uh, if you go into Thirobhava in Chandokya Upanishad, also it is there. You know, uh, uh, it talks about Thirobhava. How Thirobhava itself contains the Anugraha part also. See, in this world, even though uh, we take a fruit, we are talking about Sugandhim, Pushtivardhana. If you take a fruit and eat, we think, it's, is it Shakti alone or is it Shiva? It is Shiva and Shakti together, but we are only seeing the fruit, which is the surface, which is Shakti, which is the moving part, is only visible to our eye. What does not move is not visible to our senses. So Shakti is perceptible to the senses. Purusha is not perceptible to the senses. But the thing is, within our senses also there is Purusha. Within the fruit is also there is Purusha. Without the Purusha being existing, we cannot perceive. So you cannot say Shiva is separate, Shakti is separate, one is moving, none is moving. Both together is this world, is this entire world. That's my understanding. So you cannot, that is why in Shaiva tradition, Shiva is half, Shakti is half. Both together is one form. That's, you know, this is a very, uh, it's, it's a great concept only in Sanatana Dharma. You know, there are people who are talking about, you know, gender, this and that, uh, you know, LGBT and things like that. But if you take Shiva and Shakti, the masculine and the feminine, one form and we pray. Because we don't think that they are anything is inferior. Both are equally important. So, Purusha and Prakriti are together in this created world. At that, but we can also see the whole thing as one. If you see the whole thing as one, it's only Shiva. If you want to see two, you will say Shiva Shakti who are half, half, half. Then you can take them apart and make them family also. You know, Shiva is separate, Parvati is separate. It's all different levels of perception only. But in the ultimate analysis, it's the same one Lord who functions in different ways. He is the one who creates, he is the one who destroys. He is the one who looks after. They are not separate entities. If I, that's my understanding, brother, it thank is you, what, what we perceive. I hope I have not confused you further. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, if anyone is okay, I will open up the Triambakam um, one and go over. Uh, it's like a revision, for example, one second. I think you can see, no? Triambakam Yeja Mahesugandhim Pushtivardhanam. Yes. So I think the, your question is Sugandhim Pushtivardhanam. Okay. So the thing is, if you take, I'm just talking in terms of just grammar. Okay. Triambakam Yeja Mahe. That means, this is, I think I may have covered that later. One second. Okay, so let me see. Okay, we are here. Okay. So if we look at this, just let me look at it from a uh, grammar, first grammar perspective. If you want to look at this sentence, Trayambakam Yajamahe Sugandhim Pushti Vardhana. That is the first sentence in that mantra. Okay. Yajamahe is a verb. Verb, which means we worship. Okay, we worship is Yajamahe. Who do we worship? We worship the Trayambakam. Okay, one with the three eyes. So three eyes, I think, um, I don't think we... I think I've given Swami's... Uh, see, okay. <laughs> I had... 
see uh, I'm, what I pro uh, discussed was based on what uh, Swami had said. You know, different people have different understanding, so I don't want to, you know, no under, all understanding is correct. Let me put it that way. And I think everyone can choose the understanding because just the way uh, Shiva can be seen as one, two, three, any number, or five. So it all depends what appeals to each of us. And as long as it helps us in our sadhana, that's good. So I will just explain what I had explained as part of Sanskrit itself, okay? So in Sanskrit, the first vibhakti is the plain noun. Okay, in this, if you take this, um, uh, this word, the word is trayambakaha. Trayambakaha means it is the simple subject, which is noun, word, a simple word, trayambakaha. Trayambakam means to him or him. The second vibhakti in Tamil will say rendam vetrumai tohu. Okay, second case affix. So where something is an object. So trayambakam as a word is an object word. So yajamahe, trayambakam yajamahe. Okay, so in the sugandhim and pushtivardhanam are adjectives for this trayambakam because the adjectives also take on the same vibhakti. Okay, if you take this word, sugandhim, the simple word is sugandhi. Sugandhim, it becomes an object. So you can say sugandhim yajamahe also. Pushti vardhanam is also second vibhakti. Okay, pushti is pushti means all nourishment. Vardhanam means one who makes it grow. Okay. Swami, you know, sometimes when he blesses people, he will say, Vardinju. Vardinju means let you flourish. Okay. So this Vardhanam means anything which grows, increases is Vardhana. But the simple word is Vardhanaha. Vardhanam means it's an object. Okay. So you can say, Pushti Vardhanam Yajamahe also you can say. Trayambakam yajamahe, or you can say sugandhim yajamahe, or you can say pushti vardhanam yajamahe. So what this mantra, the first one is, that that entity is described in three different ways. One is trayambakam. That means one who knows the past, present, and the future. That person is trayambakam. Three eyes, people will say. What are the three eyes? One is able to see the past, present, and future. So if we just take a look at that, if we know the past, present, and future, we will not be worried about death. For example, if, if I have taken 1,000 or thousands of births in the past, and if I know all the births, I know all the people with whom I was related or friendly, I know where they are today. If I knew where they will be tomorrow, will I ever be afraid of death? I am afraid of death only when I don't know the past, present or future. So that itself is Mrityamjaya. Uh, if anyone has all three, that person is. So when we say Trayambakam Yajamahe means not only praying to the Lord, also realizing that we are that. We are the Atman which was present before, which is present now and which will be present later. If we know when the body dies, we will know that we did not die. So that person is Trayambakam. That's number one. Sugandhim. Gandhim, yes, smell relates to the earth. But Gandhim, even Vasanas are called Vasana. I think that's why I had given Swami's discourses. Deha Vasana, we will, we will just go to that. See, unfortunately, there are many people giving talks and studies according to their understanding. Um, 
different people study the subject in different pers perspectives many people undertake yoga thinking that you want to keep the body permanent forever and everyone writes uh, there are books people have written somebody is living for thousands of years 10000s of years adi shankara died in 32 years was he any worse off than the rishis who are living for 1000 years adi shankara even though his body is gone he is living today through the knowledge which has imparted so adi shankara is not the body adi shankara is the atman which took the form of adi shankara in a body deha vasana impels one to seek physical strength health and attractive physique many people do yoga asana just so that you have very attractive physique others will be impressed but that body also will die one day swami says rama krishna also have right swami himself so attractive physique physical strength health these are all vasanas that is not sugandhim it is only gandhim all the efforts to make up one's face will not serve to alter the natural features of a person your hair may fall off you can shave and shine it and it will shine that doesn't make anything it's healthy so the only that which has been given by the lord will be enduring you must be content with that while taking as much care of the body as is essential you should not have excessive attachment to that body which is inherently perishable and temporary okay time spent on costumes and makeup is sheer waste okay so but obsessive concern for the body is misconceived i am just so as long as you have you have only gandhim you don't have sugandhim so that was my explanation uh, but because you asked i because i have taken it from directly from swami if you want i will get a discourse of trayambakam where swami has spoken about and we can discuss every shivaratri he talks about it actually in some ways so suganti means that which smells forever that smell which will never vanish so the lord is that one who is present in all three the next one nourishing is pushti vardhanam if you look at see there are, the the problem is many many of the words we have common usage and we stick to those meanings and that does not necessarily help in the spiritual realm or in the advaitic term which swami has explained so pushti vardhanam is also the lord he is the one who makes this entire world grow why he makes it grow why you do i have a body why do i live for so many years so that i will realize who i am not to keep the body healthy and well you know if it is too healthy it will not die then we i will never be liberated okay that's why i said adi shankara died young vivekananda died young so many people jesus died young you know so pushti is the pushti which it talks about is completely different not physical strength if i am uh, teaching people physical exercise so that they can be uh, you know the physical health is strong i will try to market that uh, but you know that does not necessarily is not trayambakam because we are talking about liberation from the body so if we go to the next line we will understand why it is so i think i had uh, the, the the example which has been given also explains that okay sugandhim pushti vartana then the next line we'll go to the next line urvarukam iva urvarukam means a melon bandhana mrityor mukshiya mam pradat from bondage so it's mukshiya mukti we talked about today mukshiya means to liberate so the equivalence of how do we attain that is given in this urvarukam urvarukam is the melon which becomes so ripe so ripe that it smells nice any fruit you know when it's nicely ripe it smells nice and it has matured also 
pushti it is it is filled filled with pushti not young not young pushti a ripe fruit pushti is different from an unripe fruit a ripe fruit is almost ready to wither away dry up and die okay that will detach itself so it can also means when does an urvaru come a melon starts smelling nice when it becomes ripe old so the body has to age gracefully it has to age but it has to be healthy when it ages that's a different matter but very even if it is not so healthy when it's ripe it will detach itself naturally from the uh, creep from the creeper on which it is attached from where it grew so that is why i said all of them are described here also the urvarukam how it becomes mature at that point it detaches itself without any effort even where, where even though it's sitting next to the creeper it is detached and mrityoho mukshya from death you are to liberate so many people think if you chant this you will live for long time you will get some extra number of years extra number of years for the body or for the soul for the soul we do not the atman there is no need for asking for extra number of years but so what this as i understand as swami has explained our maturity should be such to come to the realization that we are not the body and we should not be obsessively focusing so much on the physical body which is the earth element these elements itself if you take the five elements they only belong to this world uh, they are continuously go on changing they never die also you know they just change shape but this mantra is not related to the body it is not related to the mind it's related to the atman realizing that i am not the body i am not the mind i am the atman and once that stage is reached that is the only way we can overcome death this swami has explained in many different places um so i i thought i'll just mention in each of them actually it relates to the maturity of the body is only so that it can detach itself if the maturity of the body is such that you know i want to still hold on to the body then i will never i am still attached to the body and uh, then i will not attain liberation so swami says do not pay attention to that you know i had i had given the i don't know if anyone you have printed it's i think it's posted in the classroom i have given some discourse of swami so this is a 1989 discourse sir this is you no know, very nicely you have it's a really enlightening uh, i'm happy about this uh, but only one question this uh, swami is all these explanation is is it all these swami because i never came across as uh, swami directly explaining this mantra uh, there are places where he has explained this mantra also brother oh okay um, so the thing is so unfortunately the discourses which are pro- available uh, in written form is all abridged um you know unless you we go to the original swami's full discourse in telugu with translation and listen uh, if you want i will do some research and bring it but swami has spoken about it at different points in time swami has not explained any of the mantras but in a discourse swami would talk about markandeya he has spoken about markandeya yes um, why markandeya was saved you know he has spoken because that is mrityunjaya uh, that's why i said in shiva shivaratri swami would have spoken about how different people prayed to shiva see many people think markandeya live forever you see living now we don't know when he died <laughs> you know when it see markandeya was not attached to the body he was he didn't pray to shivalingam because he wanted to live he told the parents look here you all wasted my life if you had told me i would have spent all my time in prayer and make use of this i he didn't want to he didn't pray so that he can live forever that is our understanding that shiva came 
kicked the you know yama and all that uh, swami has discussed uh, this all the, that those concepts brother but if you want i can uh, do s- search and find it for you uh, but but the, i just picked it up because uh, talking about vasana you know they have vasana because we think more immortality is body you know man has been working so hard spending all the time trying to keep the body healthy and it is of no use as far as you know it's like this you know once uh, one sage went to uh, he was meditating and one some siddha came and told uh, asked challenged him and said can you walk on water and this sage said uh, water i can't walk i don't know how to walk on the water then he, uh, that person asked him how long have you been doing sadhana what is the use if you can't walk on water so then he said um, you know i just pray to the lord uh, then he's that fellow said you don't know i can walk on water so he said show me and that fellow walked on water and then when he came back he asked him how long did you take you to learn this he said i you know spent about 21 years or 25 years to learn this technique then he told him oh i see it cost me only 25 cents to cross the river it cost me only 25 i need a boatman to take me across the river it only cost me 25 cents so sometimes human beings spend a lot of time tending to the body and an obsessive concern over the body and think that it is going to its benefit you know god is going to be happy he will say even if you live for one day live it well parikshit lived for seven days when he knew i am going to die he just immerse himself so these are things swami has spoken about what is immortality uh, which is this is all immortality there are any discourses you can take on immortality and swami has spoken about this don't be attached to the body don't be attached to the mind that's immortality um, uh, so that's my thing I, i can find it for you brother um, because um, this is my yeah. thank you thank you and and, and i you know i don't want to Um, uh, say anything about anyone everyone according to their what works for them in this yeah that's right Not, nothing nothing so, uh, right or wrong nothing but, is right uh, or wrong everyone's uh, uh, perception different and and uh, le- uh, different level of understanding yes. and, and focus uh, so but uh, for works. spiritual purpose this, this kind of it may really uh, yes thank you yeah you welcome Sai- sairam sister do she want to speak? yes sairam brother i have couple of question regarding the pronunciation because it's a important mantra i want to make sure i get it correct okay so on the slide you see uh, mukshiya i remember saying the mukshi uh, the u a uh, high swara or oh, data here it's flat so does the meaning change oh, according oh. to that oh yeah and i see the, okay okay and a second question also in the same line so triambakai or triambakam whether we use anuswara or not does the meaning change saira or the meaning are you are you asking about the swara and yeah. its impact on the meaning the that's the pronunciation the u on the u whether it's a higher or flat does the meaning change and also the whether we use anuswara or not the meaning whether the meaning change okay so um okay that's a good question so one uh, give me a minute okay um first let me get uh,
can you see something now on the screen yes uh, i see only sanskrit though are you are no english oh i see so you want english sorry no okay. no no i am i am fine i don't need no, this no, paper no, 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 just no, see I, i have it I yeah have just it. the the sri oh, lankan text no if you see the mukshya the u is a uh, higher so that's why i want to know whether yeah yeah no wait, wait i will give you sorry i should uh... yeah i see it now in english yeah because i have been busy on uh, ah, sorry now you can see it's visible yes 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 so the yeah i see okay, it now so, sorry is it legible yes okay so this, so you ask i think your question is um, the mukshya the here you see it's a udata the u on um, on your uh, slide earlier so so the, the class, slide so. which i had given i did not give any accents okay, okay. some of them had but no so i only had elongation Oh, okay okay yeah yeah see, okay so it was very simple yeah see what i had given was no they have said uh, sorry one second i don't know how okay. see this what i have okay i have not given any accent simple when i explain this i say, i told everyone you know i don't want to go into vedic teaching at this point in time i'm just teaching you like a shloka but the reality is it is from the rigveda um, and um, there are ways in which it is chanted and so let me um, talk about see even if you take uh, this mantra actually is from the uh, rigveda seventh mandala if you listen to the people the rigvedic uh, people chanting it'll be different from how the yajurveda people touch chant okay um, i don't want to get into technical details about that so there are some differences okay but what i had suggested was a lot of people chant they chant without the accent and the mantra um, if it is not you know chanted a lot understand the meaning and use it just like a prayer it's okay but if you want to chant it with vedic accents they are chanted with the right accents um so is the meaning different the meaning is uh, not very different uh, but meaning itself but uh, when you energize through chanting uh, the intonation you apply has an impact no doubt um if you chant it right the meaning should become experienceable to you is the belief okay um but because the mantra is so potent like it's just like gayatri um actual people can take difference you know how uh, swami has taught it is not necessarily the yajurveda accent so people have some confusion which way we should chant um is what swami taught is right or is is how the people who have learned the traditionally uh, is that wrong all these are questions which come up but in depending on the context and how you are using it i think it's important that you do it accordingly and if you have the ability to learn through one of the traditional ones it's it's good but to say um it is completely wrong um is um, depends on how you have learnt it and where you are chanting it is what i would say so if i will just go back to oh no it's sanskrit okay so i will come here these are the accents 
so I think maybe I should increase it slightly. We can see. You can see it? Yeah. Um, so, so these are the accents, okay? So tram here, yum, you know, there it goes up. So in, I think for, the, because you have learned the Vedas, I don't know if the others have been learning or familiar. So usually in, there are different accents or the pitch at which the words are chanted. Um, there are three usually. Uh, and um, each of them, the, the way it moves up or down has certain uh, uh, energy behind it and, um, and that's what uh, uh, sister dushi is asking about um, so trem bakam yaja mahe these are all here it is accent if you this one is high um, i think you are you familiar with uh, you have any text uh, sister yeah, Sri Rudram. So my question is only on the U. I think now here it has the higher U, right? So I was one, wondering Pushti, Mukshi Mukshi, yeah. Amrubha, Yes, both. Yes, yeah. So Mu, mu so, um, Pu. So Pantha. you have to say the higher U. Yes. Or does I, it now, yes, the meaning, yes. does it change or just the energy, right? And also the... The energy, say, energy changes, energization changes. Mm -hmm and um, it has its impact. So the way is, you know, if you're going to chant this multiple times, um, it should be learned properly under some, actually you had to learn it from a guru who has practiced it themselves. If you want to do it as a mantra sadhana, okay, one is to do as mantra sadhana, uh, one is to do it as normal prayer. You know, you go and chant it once, pray to Swami and come, nothing wrong. No, nothing will happen. But if you want to sit in some place and chant for 108 times, 1008 times, then you are basically energizing your body. If you don't chant it properly, um, the body will not be able to take the energy which is flowing into. That's my understanding. Yeah, um, so, so that time you have to pay a lot of attention to the accent. Yes. Mm -hmm. And how about triambakam or triambakai? Does the meaning change or is it the Are same you? thing? The anuswaram, the triambakam or triambakai? So what happens is, this this is anuswara, this um is there, no? When it is joined, it becomes a sandhi. Okay. So the anuswara usually changes depending on the word, the letter or consonant which follows it. Because yeah comes after that, no? Yeah, yajamahe, the nasal n becomes e. So when you chant it together, that's the way they will chant. So triambakai, that it won't be triambakam, yajamahe. It will be triambakai, yajamahe, that's the way they will chant because it's a sandhi. So, but if you pause it, triambakam, Yajamahe, you're okay. But when you bring it together, it naturally for the energy to flow naturally into the other mm -hmm. consonant, the anuswara changes so that it links both of them together. So it's so they yajamahe sugandim. That's the way they will chant. Okay. Um, is there any uh, big impact? I do not think so. Okay. Um, but if you for you to chant it properly, the energy flow is a bit more continuous if the anuswara properly changes and connects the next consonant. So its impact will be much better, is my understanding. And um, so that's what, so many people, when you chant it very fast, so there you cannot chant, so you are basically blocking that energy flow uh, so there it's better uh, you use the sandhi uh, sandhi properly and there it will change to triambakai yajamahe. I hope I answered your question. Yes, yes, yes it's clear. Even okay. like on Sri Satya Sai books and publications, they say MP3 
Even there, they say Triambakai, but yeah. uh, so, so not triambakai. everyone says. Yeah. It's not a year, okay? It is a E. Triambakai, E, I, yeah. Mm. So here it should be a nasal sound, E. Mm -hmm. Because they see, M mm, changes into E. So it's a nasal sound. You should produce it in the nose. Um, so that is our understanding. Uh, so it's I, if you want to write in English, they will put a Y and they will put a half moon above that. That basically says that it is a nasal sound. Thank okay, you, Brother so, Saira. Okay, Saira. I think it's 10.44. It's a little over today, but I hope uh, people, uh, everyone is okay with it. Um, we will close with uh, Samastha Loka and Shanti, please, if it's okay. Saira. Om Samastha Loka Sukhino Bhavantu Samastha Loka Sukhino Bhavantu Samastha Loka Sukhino Bhavantu Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Sairam, everyone. Sister Dushi, another question. Now I said Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. For yeah. example, if you pause between the Shantis, you can say Shanti, yeah. Shanti, Shanti. Shanti, Shanti. Right? But yeah. if you are going Shanti. to say it all together, then you say Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Yeah. So that means you are joining the words, then you, the Sandhi, the Visarga changes yeah. into Ish. Visarga, yeah, yeah. Visarga. So the Visarga, if you pause, if you gap, if you have gap, then you can say Shanti, 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 he is okay. But so if you're going to chant it quickly, Guru Shanti, Brahma. Shanti, Shanti yeah. it's the same thing, it's Guru who Brahma. Yeah, but if you want to say it together, Visarga. it becomes Guru Brahma. So yeah. how, how you say it matters whether the Sandhi comes into force or not. So these are not uh, because of different meanings. It's such a, you know, no, so, so that was my experience. Yeah, so wh what happens is if you, uh, in Vedas, so there's a subject, so if you, if you, Taitriya Prati Shakya, you know, we can discuss that if you want. So there's a ancillary Upave, you know, uh, Vedanga, which tells you how you should chant Taitriya uh, chants and it uh, gives rules of how it should be chanted, what changes, how what doesn't change. Um, so the, it's a very detailed one, not everyone follows it to that extent because no one, no one is studying Pratishakya today. Um, everyone to their knowledge, whatever they have used, they use that and chant. Um, so these are all prescribed in the Pratishakya. It's called Taitriya Pratishakya. If you're interested, we can have separate sessions on that uh, book. Uh, but no, for example, if for I don't know, many people chant, I don't know how they're chanting. Uh, if the A starts, you know, some in the, in the, in the, the line, you have to pause. I don't know whether you know. Say so like, Namaste Astu, okay? You can't say Namaste Astu. That's wrong. Yeah. You should say Namaste Astu Dhanvane. Like that, you should go. You understand? There should be a yeah. small pause. Because when you st st uh, when an hour comes, you had to pause before that. So things like that, you know, these are all yeah. prescribed in the Pratishakya. Yeah? So, but it's uh, it's a uh, it's a more uh, in involved topic. Okay, Sahiram. I didn't hope uh, that it should not be part of this syllabus, but because you asked the question, so I thought I will address it. Yeah, if we are going to chant, then we have to learn it properly. That's why. Yes. Like, not you, you won't find too many people who have learned it properly. Yeah. Okay. No, I was surprised because uh, even uh, the Sri Sati Sai books and publications, they have it correctly, the MP3, the tutorial, but in Prashanti, they don't follow all the rules. So I was a bit surprised. Um, see, um, the thing is, different schools follow, imp give importance to different uh, aspects of the chanting. And um, in front of Swami, Swami, it, it's, it is, some of these things are not as important as the bhava. 
Okay. Uh, that's what I want to know whether it's the so, meaning different or because they say the your intonation sir, should be correct because I don't should, know Sanskrit. It so should be correct. Say so it should be correct, but the bhava is much more important than even the swara or pronunciation. Mm -hmm. And uh, Swami gave much more importance to that. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, you know, people who uh, different people give too much importance to it's just the way the body should not be given too much importance um, but enough importance um, mm -hmm. so I think you know people can say this is wrong that's wrong but Swami would say many people chant mechanically like a robot mm -hmm. but there's no bhava and they mm -hmm. think they are chanting it correctly uh, that itself is uh, not necessarily uh, right the bhava, see, in Parthi, the advantage you have is in front of Swami, you are chanting, the bhava is completely changed. Mm -hmm. uh, if you, even if you take, who sing bhajan, you know, they may not be perfect musicians. But Swami say that's plenty of bhava. And that compensates for any shortfall. And that is to understand the meaning and uh, say, uh, chant. Okay. So I will uh, stop at that. Thank you, Saira. Okay, Saira. Thank you so much. Saira.